man, I'm all over the road. I, I told you last week we, you know, just kind of freestyle. Just I have notes and stuff like that. I mean, but uh, just kind of letting the Spirit lead. And, of course, I got a lot of messages said, just continue to do that. So we, we'll continue to do that. I, I didn't mean in reference that he doesn't lead me any other Sunday, but a lot of times uh, because of my seminary education, I, I feel somewhat tied to an outline and, and background research and all this good stuff that they teach you and train you, and it's well needed. But uh, this series is kind of taking on the life of its, its, its own love handles. Um, we, the, the, the original thought on this was that God's love is a gift to you and me, and yet often we don't understand the meaning and power of that love. I started, uh, this is our third message. I started two weeks ago talking about God's love for us. Uh, message one was how he loves us, and he loves us unconditionally. A lot of times uh, I tried to share with you my, my walk in the beginning after being uh, radically saved from a drunken stupor and, and just things that I'm embarrassed about in, in, in this time in my life, but, but uh, they are what they are, and God is, 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 is just an awesome God to do what he is able to do, and, but a lot of my relationship with him was based out of fear, legalism. I, I didn't understand uh, a lot of things. I, I went off to, to seminary and, and uh, got guys talking about uh, Calvinism, Arminianism. I didn't know if I was Republican or Democrat. I, I didn't know. I mean, I, I grew up in a home that dad didn't go to church, and it wasn't, he's not a bad guy. Uh, he just didn't go to church. He's hard working. Most, most every day he was working, you know, and so uh, I just didn't know a lot about these things, and, and so when I give my life to Christ, I took just, just one or two discipleship classes there uh, and just really began to read on my own, but I was always living this life if I didn't do this, then he wouldn't love me. Because, see, that's what the world teaches us. The world teaches us that it really it's more lust than it is love. It's more of the flesh than it is of the spirituality. And what God wants to teach us and equip us with is that you do for me and I will do for you. And so I thought, well, God's gonna, he's not going to love me if I don't do what I'm supposed to do. And, and, and the Bible does say this, and I, I taught on it last week because the second message was, uh, how do we love God back? You know, because we live in, and I, I kept doing this because we want to touch love. We, I, I don't know why I just kept with the curves, but uh, we, we, we want tangible. You know, we want tangible. And, and how do we love God that really, if you want to, I mean, you can be super spiritual and go, well, uh, heavens declare his glory. I, I got that, man. I get, I get it. I, I, I got my education. I know the scripture. But how, how, do I, how do I put my arms around God? You know what I mean? How do I, how do I love him? And, you know, I mean, you know, tree huggers. I mean, but you, you know what I'm saying? How do we, how do we love God? And, and uh, to go back to being this legalistic fear of my beginning relationship with God, it's where he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Well, man, it's, that, was a, that was really a struggle for me because I, I've got to do these things, but I, I don't know about you guys. I'm looking. Yeah, you're, you're a super spiritual bunch. I, I couldn't keep all the commandments. Man, I, I mean, I, I'd mess them up every time. And, and, and even if I got to the last one, I would always think that truck was nicer than my truck because it most of the time is, you know, but it, it is the way it is. And so if I covet, then I've, I broke them all. And so it was, it was a war of, of this. And I pastored for decades uh, under law, being legalistic and, and, and just... And just being tied to this fear, ruined my family, my, uh, I ruined everything around me just by all of these things and, and not realizing that his love for me and for us and for the world is unconditional because he told us in, in, in John 3, 17 that he didn't come to condemn the world. We were talking about that last night. We, 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 he didn't come to condemn, to judge, to, to put you under his thumb and mash you down. He, he come to save you and set you free and that you would have life and that life more abundantly. And so this whole series is based out of do we really know how to get a handle on that love for us? Most of us talk about it. Most of us, you know, most of us that grew up in the God Bless Bible Belt here, if we can still say that, um, we, we, we say, hey, we love God. We love a country, and we love our four-wheel drive trucks. I mean, I, you know, we, 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 I love. I mean, I love him. But do we really understand what that means? And so I tried to break that down, how he loves us and how we're to love him back. And, and, and listen, it, it boils down to this. That last week, if you're not here, if you hadn't watched it or whatever we, ways we put it out there to you, it is simply this. I took you to the story between Jesus and Peter after his resurrection. He meets him on the, the shore. The guys are going back to fishing. You were with me. You know the, the sermon. I'm not going to repreach it. But basically, the reason he asked him three times was ultimately to remind him, my grace is sufficient. I love you unconditionally. But he asked him, he used two different types of words there in the Greek, a phileo and an agape love. There are different tense there, a little play of words. But what he was really saying is, do you love me more than these? He's saying, do you love me priority? 
You know, God, this, is, this is how we love God back. We, we love him. It's not necessarily by doing everything that the Bible says, because you, you, let's just be real. Don't tell everybody else. Don't tell the other churches. You can't do everything, and the preachers can't either. You, you just can't keep it all. You can do your best, but it will, it will absolutely end in religious suffering, always. You can't. And so what you have to get into this place is that I love him because he's first in my life and he leads me. And what he was saying to Peter and what he wants from us is he wants us to, to, to love him. And I talked about a fresh start, you know, because in that dialogue, he calls him uh, his name. It, it, he, didn't, he calls him the name that he originally, when he very first called him and saved him. And so what he was saying, man, let's just start fresh. Let's just start fresh. And so... Now we've walked through those two weeks, and not that we have a, a grasp on this vast love that God for He so loved us. You with me? Say amen. amen. Make sure you're with me, okay? Not that we have a grasp on it in, 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 in totality, but we have a better understanding that He loves me unconditionally, not because of what I do or don't do. He just loves me because He is love, all right? All right? He loves me so much that he won't leave me the same. So he leads me to change and to do better and to live better. And, and ultimately, I begin to understand and realize that he's first in my life. Not my wife, not my child, not my job, not my hobbies, not, not nothing. There's not nothing. It's double negative, but nothing. Sorry, babe. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing is to be priority. Nothing is to be priority. And then it, he, he wants you to be passionate about, about him. Now, we're going to transition over the next couple of weeks, all right? We're going to transition to how do we act that out? Why is it that we struggle? Why, hey, why is it that we struggle so much with loving one another, all right? We just come through uh, uh, Valentine's Day, right? And, uh, and, and some of you are you're like, man, I'm glad it's over. I'm single. I'm single again. I don't care. I, that's the stupidest. That's, I, listen, I, I, want you to, I want you to hear me with your heart today, okay? I'm not, I'm not here to say this is good, that's bad, or you should have did. I'm not. But it's this gift season. Man, I'm, I, I just noticed through the social network a whole lot of pictures. Some shouldn't have been put up, but I, it's just my opinion. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but... I want to transition this morning into how do we act that out? How do we do that more than giving each other gifts? Because, see, I want you to get this with me. Okay, here we go. We're going to, we're going to, here we go. See, the greatest gift that you can give is not a dozen roses, not two dozen roses, not a diamond, not a necklace, not chocolates, not, not. Greatest gift that you can give the world <laughs> is to love yourself. You, you, you say, you say, wait a minute, well, I could have got away from Valentine's Day. I promise you if, you, if you, if you will live by this, you can get away without giving any kind of gift necessarily that you buy in the store, all right? Now, but the greatest thing is that you have to love yourself, okay? Now, I don't mean like Vanity Smurf, okay? All right, you know what I mean? I just want to go ahead. Go, you know, we were we, we talking about this morning, right? I, I, the negative side of the coin is this. Now, I'm, I'm, we're going to have a good time this morning, but the negative side of this is that I'm all that in a bag of chips, and I made my own dip. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, that's how I roll, baby. All right? Yeah, and I, I won't lie to you. I struggle with that. Uh, I struggle with that. And not, not cause I, I, I just struggle with that. All right? Uh, I'm just confident. You know what I'm saying? And, and, but, but see, the negative side of that is when you think you're better than someone. Ha, see, see, I, I pulled in. It's when you think you're better than someone. See, because the Bible teaches us the opposite of that. It says to esteem your brother better than yourself, to never look down on anyone, and that to be cheesy unless you're reaching down to help them up. And so not that kind of love for yourself, okay? So some of you right off the bat need to repent of that because you're going, mm, that's right, I love myself. Yeah, you need to repent of that. I'm not talking about that kind of love for yourself, that, that sinful pride, vanity, selfish motivated by what you can get, what I can get out of it. I'm, I'm telling you, if you're not in a relationship, but you're headed toward one, or you think you may want another one one day, and that way of a relationship, I can tell you that will never work. It will always end in destruction. It will cause greater wars. That's why the greatest gift you can give your coworkers, your school, your neighborhood, this church, this community, is to love yourself first. Now, I'm going to tie it to a verse of Scripture this morning, and I'm going to show you something I overlooked until this Last couple of weeks studying for this. I want you, if you have your smartphone or your Bible, I want you to turn with me as I got it here. It'll be on the screen if you don't have a Bible with you. Mark chapter 12, verse 31. 
Mark chapter 12, verse 31. I'm going to read just a portion of this verse of Scripture. I'm not going to take it out of context. I'm actually going to put it in context, and then I'm going to preach it real hard, real fast for the next 20, 25 minutes, okay? So you, you, you just stay with me, all right? So if you don't have a Bible with you or your, your, your smartphone or whatever, it'll be on the screen. Here, here's, what, here's what Jesus says. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, you all know that in this dialogue, the Pharisees are trying to trip Jesus up. They're trying to get him to say what's greater or, or worse, put yourself up as God, even though he is God. And he, go, he, he gives us two greatest commandments or the greatest commandments that all other hinge on. And he says the first one is this, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy mind, thy soul, everything, our strength, everything, everything, our emotions, everything. That's why we, we're Baptocostal, right? So I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. I'm more Pentecostal than I am anything. I don't ever want to hear anybody criticizing over somebody that's worshiping emotionally. Man, I, I, got, I got folks in my life that you, you probably don't even know this about them, but when they're really in the Holy Ghost, man, all, all they can do is weep. And so, so I, I, I want you to know, because I noticed this, this is just a little side note of the message, all right? To love the Lord thy God with everything, our soul, our emotions, all of our being, everything, everything. Because I noticed that a couple of times, you, you, I heard a couple over here and a couple over here want to clap. Don't ever, 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 ever hold back in this house. Don't ever hold back. If God tells you, listen, if he tells you to get up and run, get up and run, John. Go on, take it off, brother. Go on, chicka, throw the coat and go, baby, all right? Kick the shoes and run. I'm just saying. Now, if you fall out, I've told you this already. Somebody may try to resuscitate you, okay? I, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I want to warn you, okay? Cause remember, the costal, so some don't, you know, so, so, so know that. But you're free, so don't ever worry about, man, you, you, I don't know what it is with me. I'm, yeah, yeah, come on, yeah. And I got the Baptist sway going on the whole time. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. And, and, and for others, I, I, this is a whole side note. This is just the spirit. But <laughs> you're going to say, go back to the outline now, preacher. <laughs> and for some of you, that's how you worship. I'm so don't want anybody criticizing anybody. I want you to look at old fuddy dud over there. That's just how they worship. See, inside, it's like uh, uh, jumping beans. Jump, 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 and all kind of things. That is this side, this side here. So, yeah. That's okay. I know you grew up in the, in, in the trailer park or the hard knocks or the, or the mill hill. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. So let everybody criticize your emotion. Worship freely. He says to love him. Love him supremely. Then he goes on to say this, and this is our text for this morning. I'll, I'll get back on track. And then once you get a grasp or a handle on how he loves you and how he wants you to love him back by being priority first, being passionate, emotional about God. He's everything. And I'm telling you, some of us had to learn by losing everything that he is everything. He's all you will ever need. Once you get there, when you move from that place, then, then love others. Love others as you love yourself. Most of us struggle with loving ourselves. Most of us, if we just told the truth, we don't even like ourselves. Oh, you look good today, and you smiled real big at me, and when I asked you how you're doing, you said, I'm doing well. It's good. How are you, preacher? And most of us, truth be told, we don't really like ourselves, and it's a struggle for us because the truth of the matter is that's the greatest relationship you'll ever have, that relationship with yourself, for you will spend more time with yourself than anybody else. Amen? Yeah. I know I'm not real deep, okay? I know that. I know that. <laughs> it's practical. But you will. You'll spend most of your time with yourself. You know yourself better than anybody else. Most people don't like themselves, so they don't love themselves. Therefore, they can't love other people. That's why you bounce from relationship to relationship to relationship, from job to job and career to career and, and on and on and on. You say, wait a minute. I, I, I just, that's because I'm looking for No, no, no. It's because it, the root of it is you've not got to handle how God loves you, so you don't understand that God loves you unconditionally, so you need to drop the conditions you put on yourself or that you've been forced into, and you need to start loving yourself. And not in a vain way, but in a God way that he said, listen, you are mine and love you. Most of us don't even like ourselves. And yet we will spend the most of our time, with, sometimes Addison will be in the tub or in the back room or, or her room or playing or downstairs, anywhere, and she'll just be, I mean, just be jibber-jabbing away, singing, I'll say, baby girl, who are you talking to? She said, I'm talking to myself. I said, good, best conversation I ever have when I talk to myself. 
smartest conversation I ever, ever have. Intelligent. You spend most of your time with yourself, and the reality is you don't even like yourself. And I want to try to help transform that today. I want to do my best to show you in the scripture that you have to love yourself before you can love anybody else. That's what, the, that's what Jesus said. I'd never seen it like that before because we always look at it. As a matter of fact, when I, when I shared the text with our media team and, and they come up with, you know, they think titles and stuff, it's like we're going we're to talk about loving our neighbor. No, we'll get there. <laughs> but you can't love your neighbor until you love yourself. You can't love your husband, can't love your wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, fiance, whatever. <laughs> You can't love them until you love yourself. And so I want to try to break down some things today and, and really, really let's examine ourselves before God. And do we really, really, really. Some of us, you with me, say amen. Can I be real? It's okay, right? Can be real? Can take a little drink of water because it's hotter than I'll get out up here. Some of you don't like yourself because you were abused when you were a child. And so you live your life feeling like you're guilty. Most of you, most of you have not suffered from some kind of major trauma like that, but there are a large number, whether it was not physical abuse, maybe it was verbal abuse, maybe it was, maybe it was sexual abuse, maybe it was a loss of a loved one at an early age, maybe it was divorce, your mom and dad, they split up when you were a kid, I always pray over Addie, you know, she's gone through that making sure that she understands that she's loved unconditionally, no matter what. Mom, dad, stepmom, grandparents, everything. Maybe, maybe it's something. And you say, well, I'm good. I'm grown. I'm good. I got kids. I'm all now. I mean, let's get real. The reason you struggle so much is because you don't even like yourself, let alone love yourself. Because you've let some kind of trauma in your life. And, and, and let me say something. It's not your fault. I, 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 let me just bring you to this because I, I was never abused that I'm aware of cognitively. I've never, never were, was abused. But, and I struggled. Man, I got stuck after mom died. I just got stuck. And it took crazy things happening to understand. So, so, so maybe, just maybe, just maybe this word is for you today. Maybe God's going to bring you past the place where every time you look at yourself, you feel guilty. Listen, people pass away. Our days are numbered here. The Bible teaches us that. It's hard for us with our flesh to let go, but it, that's just the reality of the situation. Things don't last this side. Wood, hay, and stubble will burn. The things of God will last forever. And I'm not belittling your love or the abuse that you suffered or the divorce that you went through or the drought or desert or the loss of your job or the loss of your child or, or the situation that you're in right now. I'm not belittling that at all. I'm actually challenging you in the midst of that to scream louder than you've ever screamed in praise to God and acceptance of who you are and to realize that God is greater than all those things and that he loves you. And until you love yourself, you can't love anyone else. You don't know how to love anyone else. I had to fix me before I could move on. Do you understand that? That's what I'm talking about this morning. Let me give you a few principles for the, the, the remainder of the time that we have. You, you guys okay? It's kind of heavy in here. I, I know it is. I know it is. It's, it's heavy. We're going to have a good time. But I don't ever, 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 ever want to get done and feel like I didn't do what God asked me to do. And so I want to challenge you. You see, for a long, long, long time, I didn't love myself. I didn't even like myself. Every time I looked in the mirror, I was a failure. High school dropout, a drunkard, and a dope head that knew better, that was raised better, that was taught better, that could understand things. I, I would use anything and everything as an excuse. Oh, I would go around and say, hey, how are you doing? And smile and be happy to everybody else. But inside, I didn't even like myself. It's because I did not grasp or have a handle on how I am to love myself before I can love anybody else. And it starts with this. you got to realize, first of all, that you're an individual. You're an individual. You got that? You said I shaved my legs for that. Yeah. You're an individual. Some of you should have shaved your legs. I'm just saying. You are an individual. I just make sure you're listening. You are an individual. You're an individual. This, 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 is, this is key, man. I cannot wait. 
I, I, it is it's of utmost important to realize that you are individually tailor-made. The Bible teaches us very clearly that you are created in the image of God. Now, I say that to remind you of this. You don't have to live your life trying to impress anyone. Do you know that? Most of the dumb things I have done in my 38 years, most of the injuries that I have suffered <laughs> is because I was trying to impress someone that didn't even give a rip about me. They would just say, look at that dummy. Oh, they cheered me on, but inside they were saying, he's dumb. Look at him. Let him go first. Yeah, let's see. And the thing is, you would, you would think that we would grow out of that, but it is because we've never stopped long enough to deal with the issues, whether it was some trauma at an early age or a trauma that you're going through now, and to deal with this, to, to see yourself. We want to surround ourselves with chaos and noise and blend in because we don't want to get still before the Lord and let Him remind you that you, you are individually tailor-made. He knows your faults. He, he knows your failures. He even knows the freckle that He put in the places you wish He didn't have a freckle my friend he put them there he individually designed you so you don't have to impress anyone and on the flip side of that on the flip side of that you don't have to let anyone pressure you in or press you into some mold i am me you understand i am and so you go we know that <laughs> i'm me i don't have to be like anyone else i like all kind of music i like working out i like I like all kind of stuff, and I'll stop there because I may tell you something I don't want you to know. I don't. I, I, <laughs> ain't right, are they? I struggled with that. Now, things that are ungodly, sure, the Holy Ghost convicts me, and I'm not making fun of that. But what I'm trying to tell you is you don't have to worry about impressing anyone by some religious... Did you know we try... Let me back up to that. We as preachers, we do that. We try... Oh, my goodness, I can't tell you how we try to impress people, man. I'm, I'm so far past that in my life. I am so far. We try to impress people the way we pray. We know it's going to be our turn to get up there as pastor and pray or we're at some meeting, FCA rally or some meeting, associational meeting or some big wig, big hair, blah, blah, blah. And we get up there and they say, Pastor Joel Hendricks from such and such church, will, he's going to have invocation. What? I want, you want me to pray? And so we, thou Father God in heaven, how it be thy name. What are you doing? I, I'm from the Mill Hill, man. I have a GED and a seminary degree. I, I, I know who I am. I'm not saying I want to dumb myself down, but I don't have to do that because I'm already pretty slow. I'm just saying, why in the world would we try to impress someone that really don't even care about us to begin with? Because if they really love themselves to love us, they don't care what you have to offer. They don't care what you're wearing or what you're driving. They don't care if you meet in a school or a cathedral. They don't care about those things. You don't have to worry about how you look, sweetheart. You don't have to worry about that, man. Now, some of you need to work. I'm not saying just sit around. I'm just saying stop worrying about impressing everybody. And on the flip side, don't let them press you into some old. You don't have to look like some cookie cutter woman. You don't have to look like some buff stuff dude. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta love yourself. You gotta love yourself. It, it is so crazy. It is so crazy. How you let someone else dictate how you dress, what your weight is to be, how you to wear your hair. And no, I'm talking about you guys. I'm not talking about you guys. Because most of us need our women to dress us. I mean, that's just the way it rolls, you know? You look in the mirror and you see... You see disgusting, you see ugly, you see that, that no one will love you and no one wants you and, and that you're used and abused and, and that you have all these scars and this baggage and this stuff and this hurt and this trauma and you don't realize that God made you in his image, yes, by some mistakes and some sin and some things that we didn't even do, it's just life and how things happen, we are who we are, but you don't have to measure up to their standard, it's just his standard, it's his word, he's the plumb line, you don't have to worry about it, you are individually crafted i get so tired of folks giving praise and honor 
And you can say it any way you want to say it. I ain't fat, I'm fluffy. I don't, listen, you can reword it any way you want to reword it. The only reason you do things like that or make fun of yourself is because you don't even really like yourself. Let alone love yourself to love somebody else. Is that all? I'm preaching better. Is that, is that all right? So let's do this. Let's, let's try an exercise. I'm trying to get this mic down so it don't sound like I'm blizzard in here. Let's try a little exercise here. Ladies, girls, women, I want you to say right now, just say right now, I want you to say, I'm beautiful. Somebody really get it over here. I'm talking about, baby. Yeah. That's a Robinson, I believe. Uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's try that again, lady, because there's only about a quarter of you. I-, I want you to say, I'm beautiful. Go ahead. Okay, say it like you mean it this time. Well, that's, what I'm ta- that's what I'm talking about. Let them know. Let them know. Let Seneca Baptist know. Our women are beautiful over here. Okay, men, let's, <laughs> you thought we were going to do it? Men, let's try something, all right? Now I want you to say, I'm a stud muffin. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, seriously, I want you to say I'm a stud muffin. Ready? Go. Some of y'all put too much emphasis on the muffin part of it. <laughs> y'all nuts. All right, men. And women don't. We, men, I'm a stud muffin. Or at least you want to be. I'm just saying. <laughs> Told you we'd have a good time. Some of you saying, I just say I'm a redneck. I mean, I'm just saying. Own that, though. Own that. See how good it feels to laugh or to have a good time? You see how good it feels? And I know I'm being silly and, 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 and facetious and trying to get, engage you. I mean, but you got to really believe that. That he individually made you, the, the tailor made you, handcrafted you. Yes, poor choices, things we do sometimes lead to things in our health and our being that's not what they're supposed to be. But I'm telling you, when you look in that mirror, you do not have to worry about what somebody else thinks about you. Because God said, she's mine, he's mine, and they're awesome. They're fearfully and wonderfully created. From the moment of of conception, they were beautifully created. Even out of a bad situation, God can work miracles. So to begin with, you need to understand that you are an individual. That you don't have to be like any, and can I, I, str- I struggle, I don't, I'm eight years on the adventure as a dad, so I have no idea. I, I don't have it all figured out. I, I, just, I just don't want to say it like I'm some authority on this, but, but I, I, I struggle with, I don't want Addie ever to feel like because of the way I talk to her or because of the way she may fall at gymnastics or may not dance quite like other dancers when she's taking dance or she may not run as fast as others or ride her bike as well as others or whatever or in 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 academics if she may not make the 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 gifted and talented or the or the honor roll which she has praise the lord she's made the honor roll i mean i don't want her to ever feel like she doesn't measure up because big daddy coach made her feel like she wasn't worthy now i can understand if she's watching more tv or listening to her iPhone or playing on her iPhone more than she's doing her homework. Now, that's, that's discipline, and I, I, I will not spare the rod, so not to spoil the child in my house. But you, you get what I'm saying. You got to love yourself, mom and dad, and quit trying to live vicariously through your children and putting more pressure on them than they actually need. You know how hard it is just to be a kid? You say it's easy. I'd say in this day and age, it's one of the most difficult things. Do you not read the statistics on bullying in the school? Do you know where that bullying comes from? It's because most people don't even like themselves. And they come from a home that a mom and dad don't like themselves. They don't like the kid. And so they send the kid back out of the public schools to the private school. So the private school is just as bad as the public school. Can I get an amen? And I'm just telling you, and the reason they do that is because it trickles down. Because you don't love yourself, you don't know how to love on your kids. Because you hadn't, you hadn't stopped long enough to address those issues and learn how God wants you to love yourself. You don't even really know how to love your kids. You either go overboard in gifts and loving and freedom and all these things, or you go opposite extreme and you punish and lock down and struggle with them and make them feel this way or that way. Do you understand what I'm preaching? They're individually crafted. They're, they're weird. Addison's weird. And she's going to get weirder. I just know that. 
The more she's around Sandra, I know what's going to happen because she's weird. You are listening. I want her to be herself. I, I do. I do. I want her to understand God individually made her. I want her to make great choices. I want her to, to be as active as possible. I want her to eat as healthy as possible. Though her papa calls, she calls me from time drive-in last night, and I love time drive-in. Don't get me wrong. But anyway, I'm not taking any of that out of the equation. I just want her to know, and I want you to know, that before you can love anybody else, have the marriage that you want or the marriage that you dream about one day, or anything in that relationship department. I'm talking coworkers. I'm talking about neighbors. I'm talking about the sports. I'm talking about everything. You have got to learn to love yourself. And doing so, you got to understand God made me. You know, sometimes I, I don't know if you have this problem when you talk to God. I, I get tongue-tied. I get tongue-tied up here. I get stuck on a word. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And that's not the Holy Ghost. I, I, I just get, I just, I just get, I, I don't know how to articulate. You know, it's okay. See, the cool thing about God is, is that he already knows. You see, he put the thought in your mind. He put the desire in your heart if you're chasing after him. And so sometimes I just have to get to a place, God, I don't even know what to say. I'll have situations just like this whole big body that we're trying to move and, 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 and go forward in our, our ministry. It's, God, I don't know. I don't know what to do. God, I, and, I just get, and so I just let it go. And the cool, thing, the cool thing is, is that sometimes I feel like he needs me to tell him when I forget. He made me. He, he knows how limited vocabulary I have. He, he knows how millhillian I am. He understands those things. He understands where I was brought up. He understands the dialect. He understands the southern drawl or the, or the deep south little drawl that I have. He understands. He also understands the way I roll and how I like things and I, I desire things. And he understands. And you've got to get to a place where you are free in that, not to live a sinful lifestyle, but to understand that God is just cool with you be in you because he made you and stop trying to measure up to everybody else and stop letting somebody else try to push you down or make you feel like you got to measure up to their standard i struggle with that more than anything i'm glad my wife knows everything you understand i mean she just she, she I, I i told her this one thing that, that we, we i keep it interesting to say the least and i guess you can only imagine I mean, because just in mid, we can be engaged in a show, and in mid-show, I just, ah, I just bust out, man. I mean, I just bust out. I, I, uh, I walk around, and I mean, the neighbors probably think I'm psycho, but I'm just saying, I'm just, I, we keep it interesting. But I don't have anything to hide. You got to get to a place when you look in that mirror, or when you have someone else look at you that you don't think, well, they're judging me and criticizing me and breaking me down and saying I'm this or I'm that. Get to a place where you say, I'm beautiful. I am a stud muffin. Or whatever else you want to put there. First place to start in loving yourself is to realize you're an individual. The second one is, is to actually know your identity. Just know who you are. You'll quit trying to fit in everywhere once you realize who you are. Because there'll be places you don't belong. Say amen to that, please. <laughs> There's places you don't belong, all right? Once you, once you learn your identity, I'm going to give you several verses to back this up, and they're all going to come from Romans chapter 8. The first thing that you need to understand under your identity is this, is that you are a child of God. Romans 8, 16 tells us this, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. You see, I, 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 don't, I don't have to worry about who was my mom or who was my dad or, or did they love me or they didn't love me or they didn't put enough milk on my cornflakes or they didn't put the banana slice just right in the cornflakes or whatever. I don't have to worry about those things because, see, now, because I understand and have a better handle on how he loves me and how I can love him back and make him priority and be passionate, I understand that unconditionally I am a child of God. Did you know that in my walk with Addison, eight years on the adventure, that there will be times that she breaks fellowship with me when I put her in time out because she's disobedient, right? Or that I whoop her tail. That's just, you know, how I roll. I mean, we'll whoop her tail, all right? And I send her to her room, okay? All right? There are times that we will break fellowship, but there will never be a time that we ever, ever, ever break relationship. She will always be mine. And, and let me say that real, real proudly, too. She will always be mine. Do you understand that? 
And so you got to understand that even if you don't know who your biological mom or dad is, even if you, you've had every guy in your life or every gal in your life say that you are nothing or nobody or use you up, and when they get what they want, they're gone, you got to understand that just because you look in the mirror or in the quiet place of your heart, you feel like no one wants you or you're not uh, lovable and that you don't fit in or you don't measure up, you got to understand you do. You're a child of the Most High God. He died for you. He made you. He understood you would mess up, so he sent his son to clean up up your mess up so that your mess up could become your message to share with everybody else giving praise in the house feel like a little John Hagee today some praise in the <laughs> you are a child of God you're not so-and-so's old lady you're not so-and-so's old man you're not so-and-so's son or so-and-so's daughter there's nothing wrong hey I told somebody the other day I think we were just breaking it down like this listen she's my she, hey, she's my Bonnie, she's my ride or die, she, she, she's my better half, she's my old lady, she's my rib, that's why I had it tatted across my rib. Uh, Sandra is that for me, but she is herself. I met her, and if anybody knows Sandra, she is an individual, okay? I, I, I don't make her, I don't define her. She's not the pastor's wife, she is the pastor of this church with me. Do you understand? She is the mother to Addison's wife to me, help me. I don't identify her by saying Joel this or that. It is identity by that she's a child of God and the reason that she loves me is because she loves herself because she loves God before all of that do you understand am I preaching too fast for you you are a child of the most high God you want to walk like that you want to talk like that you want to know who you are I don't care if you buy a t-shirt or a bracelet or a bumper sticker. I don't care what you do. I hope you tell the whole world, I am a child of the Most High God. You need to know who you are individually before you can ever partner with anybody else in any arena. Love your neighbor as yourself. I love me before I know how to love this world. I don't know who I am. I'm a child of God. Let, let me give you another, another, another identity or birthmark. I'm a child of God. The Spirit bears witness to that. I know I belong to Him. You don't have to tell me I'm saved. Let me, let me stay hungry down there a little while. You don't have to tell me that I'm a Christian. I don't need you to tell me I'm a Christian. You all right? Let me say it again. Let me, I'm, say it, let me, I'm going this side. And I, I love you, man. I don't need to tell you you're a Christian. You know you're a child of God. You don't have to tell me I'm a Christian. I know why, because the Spirit bears witness. Because every time I act like a knothead, he reminds me under conviction. And every time I break out in tears or preach like this or get to do things that are unbelievable by giving gifts to people and representing this community and the kingdom that we ultimately, I know I am a Christian. You don't have to have anybody else tell you that. Know who you are. It's not because what you do or don't do. Now, I don't think you ought to smoke. It'll kill you. But if you smoke, that don't mean you're going to hell. You're just going to smell like you've been there. All right? So, and if you drink, if you drink, don't be a drunkard. It will lead to debauchery, and it will get you off track. It said, don't be drunk on wine. We're in excess. But be ye filled in excess with the Holy Ghost so that he will control how you talk, how you walk, and how you act instead of you feeling like you're 10 foot tall and bulletproof on the shine, baby. I don't need you to tell me. You don't need anyone else to tell you and confirm for you that you are a child of the Most High God. I know who I am. You, did I preach that hard enough and long enough? Walk away from that garbage. And because I know I'm a child of God, because I know I'm a child of God, I, 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 it's not that I can't smoke or drink or do drugs or, or run around on Sandra or all the, I mean, I'd be scared to, first of all, but just, I didn't mean that I can't. I have the ability to do anything I want. I can do anything I want, but because I am a child of the Most High God, I don't want to do those things anymore. I've given, yeah, give him praise. That's all right. Some of you, I don't want to do that anymore. It's places you don't belong. It's things you don't need to talk about. It's things you don't need to read. You don't need to watch. You don't need to listen to. You don't need to drink. You don't need to do. Listen, and you don't need me to tell you which one and what not. That's between you and God. That's how we roll at one. I'm not going to get on a soapbox up here and go, blah, 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 blah. That's fear and legalism. If you get in the vein where God loves you unconditionally, then over a period of time, the things he don't want in your life, you will drop. Or they'll drop you like you're hot. The Lord gives and he takes. 
My identity, it is not based on being pastor. It is not based on being Sandra's husband. It's not Addison's dad. It's none of those things. It is that I am a child of the Most High God. Easter Sunday, 1998, United Assembly of God. I absolutely realized that he died for me. I made my way to an altar filled with hundreds of people. I made my way to the back of that building. I got a pamphlet that says seven steps to becoming a dragon slayer, and I've never looked back, and I'm still trying to slay that dragon, baby. Ow! Know who I am. Identity. I'm an individual. I don't worship like you. I don't talk like you. I don't dance like you. You getting what I'm preaching? You don't have to worry about those things you don't do like everybody else. He made you in his image. Be free. Love yourself. You're an individual. Your identity is that you're a child of God. You're a co-heir now that you're a child because once you're adopted in, you can't get out because the Bible tells us, Romans 8, 17, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. <laughs> Some of you walking around like you're already dead. And can I, I'm going to pick on my brother just a little bit. I mean, I can do that because I know I can whoop him. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, <laughs> no, he can whoop me. A couple weeks ago, you know, m- m- most of you know he, he got up, he shared this, so not embarrassing him. He, you know, he went through rehab, clean, clean and sober to this day. Praise God. Work full-time job now. <laughs> Text him on his first text him on his first day of his job. He says, how's it going? He said, I'm going to take over this place. I'm going to run it. That's my boy. Because see, the week before that and years before that, literally, every time I saw him, just Eeyore. Yeah. Word. Called him a couple Sundays ago after service, maybe three back. I don't want you to tell me about it. I don't want you to tell me you understand. I want you to do it. I want you to hold your shoulders back. You a big, broad shoulder do stand back like you somebody. Hold your head up, walk with authority. It don't make a difference what you've lost or what you're going through. Know that you're a child of God and a co-heir with Christ. I don't have to live like a pauper. I can walk around like a prince because I am co-heirs with Christ. I'm not doing it in an arrogant way. I'm doing it in a confident way that I know my God will see me through. And the phone started ringing, didn't it? Job requests started coming through. You say, now you just name it claim it well you can call it whatever you want I call it walking with swagger baby I know who I am I don't have to worry about what you think I am it's your identity how do you love yourself know who you are children grow up go off to college or move on get their own families and and they should bless God and, and, and go and move on and do those things and I hear adults say and I hope it I hope it's a long time away from me, but, but, but they say it's an empty nest, and I don't know what to do. And I see the husband and the wife, I see them out in a restaurant, and they're just looking at each other. Because you, you've built your life around your children. And there's nothing wrong with that. Listen don't, listen, don't take it out of context. It's because you don't know who you are individually. You don't know who you are individually. You, and some of you, God bless you, man. God bless you. You have taken care of a sick loved one for so long, but now they've gone on to glory, and now you don't know what to do with yourself. It's because you don't love yourself. And you say, wait a minute, I do. No, no, no. Let's break it down. Let's pull all of it away. Let's get to the nitty-gritty. It's you don't know who you are anymore. Some of you are kicking dope, and you don't know who you are outside of that. Some of you are going through divorce, and you don't know. You're like, I've built my life trying to please them and fit their mold. You wouldn't meant to fit their mold, or you wouldn't be going through this season. So you need to know who you are. You need to understand, and you need to walk like that. You need to know that on your own, you're okay, because Christ is everything. And I don't have to worry about what I lose, because I gain far more than I could ever lose. I'm a co-heir with a king, man. Who are you? I don't have to be defined by somebody else. My relationship don't define me. You all right? You don't know who you are. I mean, really know who you are. You're individually tailor-made. Your identity is. You're a child of God. You're a co-heir. And let me, let me give you this last one. Under your identity. It's found in Romans as well. Romans 8, 37. <laughs> I love this. And all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I'm individually made. I don't have to impress you. 
I don't have to be pressed down into some mold. You think I need to look like this dude or you girl don't have to look like this chick. I am who I am. I'm a work in progress. I know who I am because I'm a child of God. I don't have to walk around like a pauper. Oh, I might live in the slums. I, I, I may live in what you call the projects. See, I grew up in a little single. I didn't even grow up in a double wide, baby. I grew up in a little single wide. I couldn't wait to get my own house because I was so tired of going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? You, you, anybody been in a single wide? You know what I'm talking about, man. Just back, and there's no privacy whatsoever. As a teenager, man, that, that, was, that sucked. It was tough. And so I, 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 I'm not saying that you got to live in a gated community. No, but you got to know who you are. Even when you live in a Section 8 apartment, you got to know who you are. Don't you walk around there and let nobody else think that they're better than you. And don't you walk around thinking you're better than anybody else. You keep your chin up and your nose down because why? They don't want to see your boogers, first of all, but you need to know who you are. <laughs> I had to bring that back from the past. And I, I want to I encourage you, once you start to walk with this love, once you begin to love yourself and know who you are in Christ, not, not in a vain way, once you, once you begin to walk like this, no matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, this last part of your identity will always be true. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. I don't care what you're going through. From the most severe in this building to the, the, the thing that you think is the simplest and the most petty, you wouldn't even dare say it out loud because you think it's so silly. You know, God cares about it all. And that in all situations... Man, all these things, we are more than conquerors. So I don't have to worry about it. I'm individually made. I know who I am. I'm not tied to anything but Jesus. I understand that I am a co-heir with Christ, so I'm going to walk with swagger, all right? Not in an arrogant way, not in a vain way, but in a way that I know this last truth, that my identity is this. I'm always going to come through this thing. Just, I'm talking about just when the ref, just when the ref is about to count 10 and the bell is about to ring, just when it is, I'm talking about the guy is getting 10 out of his mouth, boom, I'm going to come up every time. Now, I may sometimes get up on one, sometimes maybe on two, but I'm telling you, God often works when it's the last moment. I'm talking about the last second, that last little stroke, that last thing, you're ready to give up and quit, you're ready to give up and you say, it'll never happen I'm never going to get through this I'll never have a job I'll never be in another relationship nobody wants me nobody will ever hear me I'll never own this I'll never be there I'll never have this I'm telling you that last moment when you begin to identify yourself as a co-heir as a child of God God will always resurrect and always flex his muscles to show his strength because in your weakness he is strong always and so I walk not with pride in an arrogant way. I walk with pride even if my, even if my old lady, if you, my wife, my better half, my ride or die, my woman, my love, even if she tells me, wait a minute, boy, we, 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 we kind of broke right now. I still walk because I'm a co-heir with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And it may not look like it's there, but I know my God will put it there every time. Love your neighbor as yourself. Reason you struggle with relationships. Reason you're struggling, period. Is you don't even really like yourself. You need to fall in love with who you are. We're all weird. You followed me around for a, you followed me around for a, you followed me around for four hours, or two hours. You followed me around for an hour. You're gonna be like that dude is, he's weird. Amen. <laughs> weird. He's weird. He has OCD. He's crazy. We're all weird. We're all weird. One of the things we did in our community group was was telling, in, identifying, and inter introducing ourselves. I'll never forget. You know, I thought he was weird to start with, but man, after the meeting, he's, he's even stranger to me now. But Corey, the master musician over here, we have so much talent up here, but the dude stands over here, you know, Corey. And, man, he, he, this is just one little thing. He wears one sock always, inside out. Always. I'm like, that's weird, dude. That's just weird. Everybody's weird. Everybody.
Let me close with this. <laughs> you know why it's so important? You know why? I, it, here's the thing. I, I do not want anyone that is, that is here that is single or single again or teenager or collegiate. I, I don't want you to think because in the next few weeks we're going to talk about relationships and things of this nature and, and, and we're going to have a good time. We're all, always going to have a good time, but, but it's, it's, it's so important. But see, before we can move to relationships, we've got to understand who we are. And we've got to love ourselves. Now, I'm working on it. I, you know, most of you know my story. I, you know, started uh, uh, this journey about 320 plus pounds. Put a picture up before and after uh, here a while back on social network. Big old guy, 46 in the waist, 54 in the blazer. It, yeah, I was passing church that I had to wear a suit all the time. And, uh, Big guy, and uh, and so, but I want to say this to you, and I've told you this before, but every time I look in the mirror, I still see the fat guy, and I don't, I don't mean to be politically incorrect, I'm just talking about me, I'm talking about you, you're fluffy and lovable, and I, I love you, okay, all right, but but I, I still see that, and so I struggle, and so I'll, I'll spend hours in the gym, I will, it, it, and if I'm not careful, it'll become my God, I love the gym, I love, I love, I love reading anything about fitness, crossfit, exercise, weightlifting, meat hits, I just, supplements, I, I love, if I'm not careful though, it'll get out of control. And the reason it gets out of control is because, see, I'm still trying to get that, 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 that handle on this issue that, listen, it makes no difference. God loves me. You know what I'm saying? But, but I wanted to share that with you, not, not, not to give you uh, this chuckle, but, but so that, because I love to hear you laugh, but, but so you understand that I'm not standing up here with all of it figured out. There are days that, because I've been through a divorce, there, there, some of you go, really? I, yeah, I, I, if you've been around me anytime you hear that, because it's, it's part of my DNA, but because I've been through that, I, I can have moments where it just creep up and smack me right in the face about Addison, and, and, and I said that earlier about how I don't want to make her feel like, you understand, I don't want you to think that I'm preaching something that, that I'm not living out before you. I want to love myself, not in an arrogant way. I, I know who I am. I'm not tied to a Baptist way of doing things. I'm not tied to a Pentecostal way of doing things. I mean, all over the road. And why it's so important before we move on in any other thing or before you leave here today is, is, is here's the ultimate thing. You, you ready? This is, this is it. This is, I wanted to drive the buggy to right here. It, it, it's because that according to this text that he says, love your neighbor as yourself. The reason that you have to understand you're an individual and you have to know your identity is because he's entrusted us with something that you cannot find anywhere else in the world. It's, it's, it's a gem, a jewel, a, a treasure that you can find nowhere else. It's the love of God, and it doesn't reside anywhere but in his children. Do you know that? It's not, in the ch- it's not in the church, not in the building, not in corporate worship. It's not in music. It's not in lights. It's, not, it's in you, even when you don't like yourself. And see, see, you've been entrusted with that. And he wants, you, he wants you to love your family first like he loves you, then your neighbors, and on and on and on. But, but, but you've got to understand that the reason it's so important that you get identify and know who you are and how you are individually crafted is because he's got something he wants you to do. You think you don't have a story. You don't think you're going to get through. You don't think you'll have a message. You don't think that you can rise above. But he's got a message for you, and he's entrusted that with you. And it's the unconditional love of God. If I am anything, I am a living, breathing testimony testimony of how God is a God of second chances. I say it every Sunday, every chance I get to talk about it is because I was counted out and told I'd never be and could never rise above and would never ever pastor again and was unworthy to pastor. And I'm telling you, it's not because I wanted to prove them wrong or in your face. It's because I couldn't get away from the unconditional love of God. Yes, I hurt and I've been hurt. But in the end, I know what he's entrusted me to do. I know who I am and I'm individually made. My journey might be a little different than yours, but we're all headed the same way, baby. So I want you to know who you are. And I want you to fall in love with who you are. And some of you, some of you today was going to mark the beginning of trying to discover who you are. Some of you, it's just happened over the last couple years or even this year that you begin to try to discover who you are and what in the world no better place to start or to continue in the journey than on the floor of an altar so i just want to give you a chance to come will you stand please